how he is again. I'm calmed down from that video on the other channel. I just was, it wasn't so much the roadblock in town that fucking pissed me off. It was the, 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 the normies. The, it's like, like, you know, the, it was just being around them made me realize how negative their energy is in the average person. But having said that, I would, I would have no hesitation in saying that this lockdown is one of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. It's it's really made me content in a lot. Well, I'm not like I'm a happy person or anything like that, but it's made me the clarity of tranquility. Probably a good way to put it, has made me see things in a way that makes me appreciate them more. So little things I appreciate the people in my life, my loved ones, my friends, uh, the people that have been kind to me, the people who've. I've known all these years and it's like it's like yeah here it was this was the tribe this is the tribe is building and to see people behave like maniacs in shopping set shop and shops and stuff like that and all that kind of thing it's made me realize i now have the clarity better than ever i know you know you should have as well you should be dealing with things much better now going forward because you're you you don't have any more misconceptions that you know humanity is an amazing thing humanity is basically a gigantic farm and uh, people like us who have broken away from the normie control thing are actually pretty happy you know it's like we're not one of them it's like it's not like an arrogance or feeling you're better it's like well i dodged a bullet i dodged a bullet of life there not being one of them and to see the absolute fear they're in. Now, no shine April 9. I'm still f only a couple of days away. But yeah, I definitely believe that by then it'll be, it will be a definitely a, a diminished concept. And we'll be looking towards the, the fall, towards uh, restoration, whatever restoration will be. But it's like the spell of COVID-19 will probably begin to end tonight with the full moon, the super moon, the pink super moon rising, which in a few hours it will rise behind me there over Nocknashi, the hill of the fairies where it always rises. And I'm um, looking forward to it. This will be a good night for magic. This will be a good night for invo invoking uh, the goddess Selene Aluna. And uh, yeah, yeah. Ever notice that the Christians call it the man in the moon, where all the pagans always associated the moon with a, a female? You, you know, Lilith, the Luna, Selene, and even the high priestess in the tarot cards. And then the Christians then called it the man in the moon. It's really the woman in the moon. But, uh, yeah, so tonight's a good night for magical workings. Uh, no, I wouldn't do anything in particularly intense. You're not going to get it. This would be a thing about restoring, say, a broken connection to someone or uh, healing something in yourself, either emotional or psychological or that kind of thing. So it's uh, I'm being grat be grateful and gratitude you have for the people in your life who love you and take care of you and you love and take care in return and that's the that's what this will be it will be a very gentle a very gentle full moon and even though it'll be very powerful but it will also i think be the the wrecking ball of this whole pandemic hysteria i i they, they we were told yesterday that Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, was moved to an, an, an IC unit. And you think there, it's either two things. It's either a cheap publicity stunt, like our Prime Minister here in Ireland gone back to being a doctor. When he, I think he's an eye surgeon. What, 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 what could he do? It's just cheap PR for the for the meat. And uh, it was either that or he's been assassinated for... Uh, for Brexit, how many how many how many goes did they have at, at Nigel Farage because of breakfast? Now, uh, so funny, you know, the, a lot of times are strange and odd. I'd have to say that this has been one of the most, the greatest experiences I've had in my life. I'm, I'm I feel blessed I went through this, and I'm got you know I've, I've learned so much. I, at the sense of tranquility. I mean, for my own sort of chaos magic workings, I put out there last year that I said in 2020, 
animals would be seen in unusual places more and more. And like, I mean, look at it now. I mean, there's non-stop videos of animal, wild animals running wild in all the cities and in the suburbs and the towns. And it's like, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. And uh, that's not to say I caused that. That's to, you see, my interpretation of reality it, through my own reality tunnel uh, is, 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 although shared with all of you, it has its own unique insights and so it's uh this is the beauty of chaos magic you're both an independent consciousness but you're part of a collective conscious where you can actually use that as a building block so yeah there's been loads of things like that and uh i'm having poltergeist like activity in the house now when i say poltergeist life i said like i that just deliberately made that 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 interjection because i don't know what it is i'm not going to say it's a poltergeist but i've had like the those are i had a short hanging up on drying and i started shaking back and forth like this rapidly and uh, a table in my art studio was overthrown during the night and i'm literally not not falling over like someone got like that and stuff was scattered all over the place and then after I hit the floor and i went in there were still things moving now that and I was funny enough it was three thirty a.m. and uh, so I don't know what's causing that. Uh, it doesn't frighten me or anything. It's it's an interesting thing, but it's, uh, it it could be it could be a poltergeist thing. I don't know. The house has never felt haunted to me or anything like that, even though it used to be a witch's house. Um, and it's it's quite old. I don't never felt the presence of a ghost or anything in there like that. What they would call a ghost. Other than something I brought in. <clears throat> and um, so it didn't feel like it didn't feel like that. It didn't feel like a ghosty thing. And so the other options are maybe it is that. Uh, maybe it is my first poltergeist experience, whatever poltergeist is. It's that, or it's a. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. It's uh, a catalytic exteriorization phenomena, which is um, I've done many times. It's always accidental. That's when there's so much emotional energy discharges from your your heart chakra, as the, the Hindus would call it, through moments of intensity that you smash a glass or knock things over, and it's just a boom, a force out of your body. It's very central to magic, though Jung called it catalytic exteriorization phenomena, but it's very real. We've all been around somebody who was upset and a glass exploded next to them or something like that. And, uh, or it's the gin thing, me talking about the gin. I bring it up in the video yesterday, but like, well, I was also been talking about the gin for a while now. And the, uh, it could be a gin thing. I don't know. There are gins around here. There's a guy called Ali in town, a Pakistani guy, and we've spoken about it. And he said he's seen them down by the old train tracks where the old factories are down there it's all closed down now but he said he's seen them when he's been out jogging and uh the last time i encountered full-on gin thing was down in west cork at bally spittle in where the virgin mary was supposed to appear and just like fatima it's all full of caves and everything and on the side of hills and uh I, but uh, and we know Fatima absolutely is a result of you know the Islamic occupation of Portugal. It's na it's named after I think it's Muhammad's mother, is a Fatima, his daughter, and like and it's even named after that. And uh, it's all full of caves around there as well. And that was a gin experience, and uh, a gin event. And uh, so was Bali Spittle. And you say, well, there's no more no Moorish invasion of Ireland. Yeah, but that whole south coast of Ireland was once uh, constantly attacked by bar. Uh, Bar Barbary pirates and these Berbers who raided the coast for white slaves so there was Islamic incursions on that coast involving capturing people for slavery in the 1600s and so that was a part of you know that's that was a huge problem in in coastal areas in the south of Ireland the south of England and uh, Spain Portugal so it was that, that's how the that's how the gym would have got there there's also the house not far from here, uh, Raheen House, and you, that's where I got, you've seen that video, How to Capture a Demon. The funny, funny enough, I found that jar the other day, and uh, that was all, something was brought back from the, from the Middle East there by Phoebes, the, 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 the antiquarian occultist uh, that caused the house to eat itself. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so... <clears throat> 
Gins are everywhere. They got brought back from the Middle East more and more, either through people's military activities there, or that's probably even why the Gulf War started, Gulf War Two, was because the the Bushes and their bizarre, almost homosexual relationship with members of the House of Saud and their own occultist occultism through the Skull and Bone Society at Yale. It's almost like they were infected in order to start these two wars. So the soldiers coming back from the Middle East would bring the jinns back inside their bodies and their service weapons and equipment. And uh, I'm totally, I'm totally believe that. Now you see the the, the that's what happened in China, the with the the weapons lab. The the, the Islamic jinns were somehow brought into manifestation by um, Islamic mystics. Who are in those concentration camps and China has been destroyed as a result. By the way, I predicted that they would possibly be sued them. It looks like they are going to be sued now by the world for like trillions. So that's the end of China. And uh, so it may be that. It, you know, the gin thing works out of space time anyway. And that's why it's used in the gin magic and gin mysticism. And Oberon, the. The entity, the king of the fairies, as it was called in England back in the seventeen hundreds, was probably it was probably a jinn as well, and probably so was Mandini, who was contacted by Kelly and John Dee. So this is a that's that's what's going on there. I've got some some poltergeist like activity, and I haven't it hasn't happened today. It was the last the last one was the two nights ago, and then that was the the table thrown upside down. And then uh, the the thing on the wall was last night swinging, but today I don't feel anything, so it might as might as might well have been either catalytic exteriorization phenomena, or the gin thing. Now, yeah. Uh, so the full moon will be rising over there when it gets a little few hours from now, and I'm really looking forward to it. It will be the wrecking ball of this reality, I think. It's you. Know, some of you all around the world are already seeing it, and it's probably a colossal moon. It's the moon is a very strange thing now. They can't really explain why it's larger on the horizon than it is high in the sky, and that's not that's a myth. They say, oh, it's just perspective. Perspe it's not. It's actually huge compared to it. That's just a, an excuse they make, and uh, it's not. It's it's it, it's not done by the curvature of the earth or the atmosphere or anything. It is. It the moon is a strange thing, and we have a relationship with it. And uh, I don't believe it's a lizard spaceship putting negative rays towards the earth. In fact, it is a good thing. It regulates the tides. It regulates women's menstrual cycle and, and so on. This is probably one of the reasons why Abrahamic religions, in particular Judaism and Islam uh, and Orthodox Catholicism, are such a problem with women's menstrual cycle, calling it the curse and things like that, make, hiding them away uh, because it's it's acceptance of a pagan god, f archetype force in nature, Luna or Selene in the moon. And so it's, you know, anyone, I mean, the, the, the whole idea of the moon being negative. Now, this, this, uh, it, there's something strange about the, the moon and our planet's relate and our human consciousness relation to it, ship to it. That's why it's important to venerate, respect, and uh, hail uh, the gods and goddesses. There well, was a goddess in every case behind the moon. Now, another thing is this comet Atlas. Uh, there was a thing in the International Business Times of India today that the scientists believe it has fragmented. What this means is, well, if someone misses you with a single bullet, they're less likely to miss you with a shotgun uh, because they'll get a spray of pellets rather than one single projectile. Now, these spray of pellets don't have the same power as a, as a bullet, but they can still cause a lot of damage. So there's a possibility of some fragments there maybe coming into the air. I don't know. I'm just saying it. But I did wonder if it fragment. Also, another thing to do with them, them as above, so below, sorcery of this, the name of the comet is literally C-19. I'm not kidding you. It's uh, Comet 2019, because that's when it was discovered. And you have Cor uh, Convid 2019. It's literally called Comet C-19. And the fact that it's breaking up is probably... Well, I'm going to throw out a hazard a guess here. 
is an esoteric guess that it's breaking up of the comet is representing the breaking up of the power of the C-19 spell upon this earth. As above, so below. I'm always telling you, observe. Look out for auguries. Pay attention to the stars. Pay attention to nature. And how your, your, your psychology and your cognition and your emotionality is at the time you make these observations. So my my thing is that probably on the ninth this is not a prediction by the way these are guesses okay guesses based no educated guesses i'm not a, a soothsayer or something or anything like that my thing is that the confirmation of the common breaking up will probably be announced on the ninth or be commonly known by the ninth so c19 in the sky has lost its shine C9 that will be reflected by on earth C19 the pandemic will have lost its shine so I definitely think that this comet is related in a symbolic esoteric sense to the C19 thing on this earth now you know if you don't believe if you if, if, if you don't if you want proof that you live in a magical world a universe and existence there you go i'm not you know people say oh the illuminati they they they, they named the scene on thank god they know but they worship the thing yes they don't sacrifice no I'm not. that's another thing i had to, some chat today going on about isn't this the season of sacrifice no there's no fucking season of sacrifice that's anti-pagan uh hatreds expressed by dumbass christian knuckle scrapers who have t said take all the pagan holidays like Beltane and Val Valpurgis and all of them uh, and say they're for sacrificing virgins and children. That's bullshit. There's no sacrificing sacrificial season. That's a that's Christian propaganda against pagans, which still continues to this day. That's uh but anyway, the so the that's that's the no shine by April nine. We've got another nine, so three nines there. So that'd be three, inverted six six six. What would three nines being reduced to be? Three, three, three. <sighs> be thank, thank God you're not a normie. Thank the goddess you're not a normie. Thank the gods and goddesses you're not a normie. Because you know what? You wouldn't see the world in your life with the mystical and magical and abilities that have brought you to this point to escape them. Ave Celine. Ave Luna, long live the horn gods.